All right, well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, go through the assignment, talk about what I'm looking for, what I'm expecting, and I'm going to show you some ways to work. But the thing you should remember is that these are just options because you really have the freedom to figure out how to do this on your own. I am not telling you how to work. I'm just telling you what you have to deliver. And uh, if you guys uh, want to explore different methods of collaborating, and communicating with your team and when I talk about that's perfectly fine uh, I'm always interested to hear you know different people's paths but uh, rather than leave you completely on your own I wanted to just go through this and give you some options and certainly you need to know what I'm looking for so we call this a debate uh, no one's standing up in front of each other and talking out loud but you're getting together with your team and you're creating what we call the team statement. And that team statement is the argument of your team. And uh, in official debate rules, no one is allowed to state their own personal opinion. So really it doesn't matter whether you agree with the uh, statement or not. The statement we're discussing right here, technology through television, texting, social networks, hosting, and the internet has contributed to an increase in literacy skills. So people have gotten better at writing because they're using all this uh, um, technology online. Uh, that's a statement. If you're on team A, you have to support that statement, whether you agree with it or not. And if you're on team B, you have to refute. You have to argue against that statement, whether you agree with it or not. And if you're on team C, you become the juror. So you're going to be judging both the statements of teams A and B. So <clears throat> in debate rules, what you're going to do with your team is you're going to share the research because you have to research this. You're not allowed to use your own words, your own personal opinions in creating the statement. You have to find somebody else, no matter what it is you want to say about this topic, against or for it, you have to find someone else who said that so that Everything that you say in your statement is supported by research. So uh, that's really why this is a debate. Debate rules state that personal opinion doesn't matter in, in this. It's all about are you a credible enough uh, researcher or uh, academic to be able to use your investigation to support what you want to say. And so uh, we're going to... Uh, get together in teams and research this topic and uh, I will talk about research is the theme of the week so the, the main general go-to's are going to be about the school library and how you can use that online and all the resources that are there and the main assignment for the week that we'll talk about uh, a little later in the week is using school library databases and doing research and this is a task of research so all of this is about your search skills and about what you can find and and uh, as we've also been looking at in some of the other discussions this week whether we can trust that information so you're going to go out and you're going to find research that supports or refutes this statement and you're going to look at that research to say you know well this is something i want to use or i feel like i can use or maybe there might be some red flags and you, you'll have to set it off to the side and it doesn't mean that you have to use only certain sources, like you don't have to use strictly the New York Times. You can use blog entries if they're well-written, if they're well-sourced, if the author has some kind of uh, cr uh, credentials. You know, uh, just because something is a blog doesn't mean that it is uh, uh, crazy. You know, PhD uh, psychiatrists start blogs, and their statements are very credible because based on their credentials. So uh, it isn't simply where something came from. On the Internet, everything's available, and you're going to be able to search in all kinds of places. So um, we've given you some tools to start looking at, you know, can I trust these articles and so forth. So we want you all to collectively get together and share this research. It's a kind of a daunting task if I gave this to one of you. But since you're on a team of six or seven people, if each of you just finds one really good source and brings it together, then uh, the strength of that team will mean that you have a lot of really great research to pick and choose from. Because which, uh, what you're going to do is have a research phase, 
go out and find some great information, then you bring it together to the team and you guys will discuss it and you'll decide what are the strong pieces that you found and what maybe you want to uh, omit or put, put at the back of the pile. Um, so you don't have to use everything you found, but of course, I'm interested in this process. So uh, as we look at this assignment, part of your grade is on how well you collaborate. Were you able to find your classmates? Uh, were you able to communicate with them? Now, not everybody can get together in exactly the same place at the same time. So are, uh, have you found methods in which you can, you know, pass your ideas back and forth uh, asynchronously without necessarily being in the same place at the same time? Did you find good tools for communicating with each other? Some of you like to text. Some of you like to use Skype. Um, you know, some of you are maybe using email. So you had to agree on a common format to, to talk with each other. And then once you've got this research, you've got to figure out a way to come together and work on this common debate statement, a document. Uh, the deliverable that the team has is teams A and B have to give me a document with your research on it and the statement that you've written, you've written as a team. Uh, and it's due by the end of the day Thursday. So um, in the instructions here, it often mentions emailing it to me, I find that to be problematic. Every time you attach something to email, our spam filter tends to like, uh, it doesn't reject it, but it holds it back late. So if someone you know sends me something on Thursday evening, I might not get it till Friday afternoon. So uh, it's a much better thing to do to attach to message within the system here. You, know, you just come up here, write a message, and you can attach it uh, just as if, you know, uh, in the same way that you attach things to the discussion board, when you when you start writing, you've got that same media panel here, and you can attach a document there, and you can send me a document that way, and it comes instantaneously rather than through email. Now, if you send it through email, um, that's fine. It's just that um, we we want to be able to turn this stuff around as soon as I get it. I'm going to post it for Team C, and Team C has through the weekend and through Monday to look through it and, and render their judgment. So uh, this is the, uh, the time frame that we're working on. You all had that extra week to talk to each other, but I wasn't really here to, to set up the parameters. But there's still plenty of time this week for teams A and B to get together, put their pull their research, and create the statement. So I want to show you some other team statements that I've received in previous months and how people have used Google Docs to work together. And again, you don't have to use Google Docs. You can work in any way that you feel comfortable. Lots of people turn in Word Docs. But what happens if you're not using an online format and you're not using a shared document is that people have to send stuff to one person who then collates it together. So it's often a good idea for a team to have a team leader or a coordinator or secretary or, or whatever you want to call that person. But the one that everybody sends stuff to and the one that's responsible, because only one person has to send me the team statement on Thursday, even though there's six or seven or eight of you. So, um, you know, you are at least going to pick someone to be the one person to, uh, to send me the document. Um, so if you have a central source and that person wants to work offline on Microsoft Word, that's fine. Um, but if you work together uh, on an online tool, that means that you can really share the workload, that everybody can see what's going on at all times. And so we kind of recommend that. We don't rule, it's not necessary at all. Uh, and again, I'm gonna talk about Google Docs, but Microsoft OneDrive is available to do the same thing. So if you guys prefer that, you can use that as well. But there are three things that I want on a team statement. Uh, I need the names of the team members that participated. Now, I've assigned the teams. If you haven't seen the teams yet, I sent out an announcement uh, a week ago and, in, and there's a post in 2.4 in which the same announcement is there. And you can see if you don't know which team you're on and, and, and you can't find it, email me. But I put a listing of everybody that I assigned to a team out there. So you don't put everybody who was assigned to the team. You put everybody who showed up. If you didn't hear from somebody, you made a good faith effort to get hold of the entire group and only so many people participated, then that's who you're going to put there. I'll, I'll know the people that aren't on the list and I will deal with that. So your way of just basically telling me who was there and who participated 
is to put the, only those names on that list. Now, if the workload's uneven, or you guys are, are uh, unhappy about the way the collaboration went, you know, I don't want to be your, uh, uh, your, your, kite, your counselor or anything. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody did their fair share and if people don't feel good about it, I do want to hear about that, but I don't want to be the person uh, uh, settling disputes. Uh, usually people have a really good experience with, with uh, collaborating, but there is this risk that, you know, some personalities may clash or people just won't get together or click. Sometimes it doesn't work. And that's a learning experience in itself because you guys are going to be asked to collaborate with each other online for the next 30 months in different kinds of teams and you will get to know people better and you learn what the strengths are and what the good times and good ways to communicate with people are. But uh, this is a first experience at it and sometimes it doesn't work, but even in not working, it's valuable information because this is what you're going to have to be doing as an online student. So I want to see the names of the people that participated and then I want the team statement. The team statement is a written set of paragraphs that puts forward your argument. It's what people would say at the podium if we were in a live debate. And every statement, every sentence that's in that team statement needs to be something that is supported by the research that you found. So the third thing that I want to see is the research that you found. And again, there are a couple of ways to do that. Often uh, here you see people uh, making a portion of the statement and then listing you know, the reference that it comes from. So the statement is kind of broken up, but it's very easy to see what they based each of this, uh, uh, each section of this on. Now, I tend to like to see the statement through clean and then a list of resources at the end. And we get, uh, you know, either of these is fine. Again, I'm not telling people how to work, but I want to show you what the options are. So here you see that uh, they've actually put links directly to, uh, you know, internet articles and so forth that go along with each portion of a statement. Now here we have uh, team members who gave their individual lists of researches, resources. They used Digo and so they, they compiled their own uh, private lists. I'd like to see a collected list. I'd like to see a team set of resources. I prefer that than seeing uh, everybody's private list because again, it makes more work for Team C to have to go check all these things out. But here we have the team statement, and, and uh, they've sort of done some footnoting in here. They're saying what the source is inside the article. And again, that's a very helpful thing because you're actually pointing Team C to, you know, saying, hey, we know what we had to do, and, and, and here's where our source was, and, and these kinds of things. Um, and then another thing that's interesting is um, people have work on different portions of this. So, again, there are different ways to work. You can talk it all out and have one person write it up and then maybe somebody else edits it. Or you can give out portions to each member and have each member write a section of it. And when that happens, ten, uh, one thing uh, some teams like to do is use different colored fonts to refer to the work that different people did. So there's a color code here that John Parker did the rest, the red work, and uh, John Pierre did the black work, etc. Uh, again, that's not necessary, but sometimes people want to be explicit about what they did. So here's a Team B statement, and again, it's not necessary to repeat the, uh, the statement that you're arguing, but maybe it's good form. So we have a, a restatement of the, the, uh, the debate topic. We have the team members. We have a clean group statement written uh, you know, straight through, and then we have all our research. Now, the research, again, is a link away, but it's still... Uh, easily found within these two links. Um, and here you see people starting to use a lot of the features of uh, Google Drive tools, and uh, we're going to talk about this a little. You can have commentary, so you can make this almost like a chat room, and people, if they're not in the, in the working at the same time, can ask questions, and it's very easy to select some portion of the text and ask a question about it. Is this spelled right? Where did this come from? And then uh, in a linked comment, someone else can respond to it. If I and um, um, oftentimes people use this in work process. You'll note that here there's this resolve button uh, for all these little chat boxes. Uh, so these are made to make comments on things in process. And when if you're asking somebody a question or you're asking for a particular spelling or a source or something, 
Once it's been solved, you can click resolve and the thing will go away. Now you don't have to clean up the statement for me. I'm very happy to see this in process because it helps me to know who did what. But you may want to clean this up for team C because team C is the one that you're really making this document for. I'm going to be judging, I'm going to be grading all three teams, but I'm not selecting the winner. Team C is the one that's going to judge team A versus team B. But uh, here we see the, the contributing members and they each took a different color font and they each gave me the, uh, a different Digo list and we have their statements and then they have actual bibliography. This is what I'd like to see. It doesn't necessarily need to be in this, you know, proper APA format or anything like that. But if the research is listed on the document, it saves someone else the trouble of having to go out and find it off a secondary list. So, you know, direct links, this is actually more helpful than the bibliography type entry because here someone can just click directly on the article, go read it. And that's what I'm going to be asking Team C to do. So, uh, again, uh, this particular Team C, they divided up portions of the, of the statement and they had different people write different sections. So, again, they color coded it. Uh, that's something you don't have to do, but if you want to do it, that's a way of saying who did what work. You can see that they put their names in the same color as the uh, sections that they use. Um, it's not really necessary to say so-and-so did such-and-such. Such. I just need to know that everybody worked roughly equally on the team. And if there is a problem with how you collaborate, then someone needs to communicate that to me. And it doesn't have to be in the document. It can be in a private message or anything like that. But, um, you know, I don't want to hear about little, you know, petty things, but if there's a problem with, you know, someone did all the work and no one and so and so showed up but didn't really do anything. You know, I do want to hear that because I, um, I, I want to give out a team grade and I want the team grade to be fair. So I need to know what's happening with each other. Uh, but again, what I'm looking for in the statement, the three things, the members who work on it, the statement itself. The statement is written in such a way that you can align what's being written with the research. And then I want to see the research in the statement. Now, Team C's job is slightly different. We are asking them to do some research, but they're not doing research ahead of time. They're doing research when they get these statements. They're checking out what both Team A and Team B did. So they're going to look at the research that's provided, uh, and they have to decide if the statements that are listed were based on the research that's there. Uh, but then, you know, in, in terms of misinformation or, or, you know, being able to rely on it, I want Team C to do some independent investigation of some of these links to say, yeah, they, uh, they, they link to this thing, but it's not really a very credible article. I want Team C to be looking at these articles and saying, uh, yeah, they used pretty solid research or not. So Team C is making a judgment about who made the most persuasive argument, and Team C is making a judgment about who made the argument based on uh, uh, sources. And again, Team C is not allowed to enter their personal opinion in it. I don't care if you agree or disagree with the statement. You are tasked with a job. And in this case, you're going to judge fairly whether Team A or Team B did the superior job of finding research and making a cohesive, persuasive argument that is uh, linked to that research. So you both have to read through the statement and you have to check that the statement is backed by the research and you have to back make sure that the research is solid. So those are the tasks that Team C comes up with. And Team C has to make a statement, a team statement, saying what happened. Uh, oftentimes with Team C's we get, you know, a split decision, like three people like this and four people like that. And, you know, uh, I don't necessarily need to know the voting numbers, but I want a team statement. Sometimes I'll, I'll accept a minority report, you know, if, if most of the team thought one way and another one or two members thought another and they want to have their opinions on, on the document, that's fine. But what I really want to know is what did the majority of the team C think and write it down in, in a cohesive fashion with reasons. I don't want to just see a one line statement that says team C thought team A did the better job the end. I want to know why. I want to know what, you're, what you did. I want to know, you know how you decided these things and so forth. Um, so team C is free to use online documents as well. Here's an interesting uh, uh, 
an example of a team using an online spreadsheet. So they did the team A pros and the team B pros and cons, and you know they were able to put their notes in and get everything together in a kind of um, uh, infographic fashion. And they were using uh, the notes and all this other features. So they were able to, to create uh, not a text document, but a spreadsheet document that got all this in and made it very, very clear. So again, I want you to feel free to work in the manner that work that feels right for you. And if you haven't done any of this yet and you don't know, what I really want you to do is just to get started with Google Docs and try it out. So all that you need to do is start a new document in Google Docs. One of you, uh, one member of the team. Now, I don't know who all is here and, and if all the teams are represented or if you guys have gotten together and started working on documents yet. But the easiest way to start is for one member of the team to create a Google Doc, uh, a regular document. And the first thing you have to do is name that document so you can change its permissions. So uh, I'm just going to call this team statement. Now, naming the document is not putting a headline on it. So I also need to put a headline in here. I'm going to call it Team A Debate Document. And uh, since this is my header, I can uh, make it a little bit bigger, maybe center it, so forth. And uh, now I want to put the names of the team members here. So I'm going to put my name in here. And uh, I'm going to share this document. So to share the document, you go to the blue share button on the upper right. For every document that you create in Google Docs, it starts out as private. That's a very good thing. You're not going to accidentally share documents without your knowing about it. Every document you create starts out private. But when you want to share it, you can click on the share button and change those permissions. So there's uh, things that you can do. You can invite specific people. But what, what the easiest thing to do is to get a shareable link. When you click on get a shareable link, you have the ability to give everybody who clicks on the link different types of permissions. They can just simply view it. Or they can simply comment on it. Or you can give them full editing permissions. I'm going to get put full editing permissions here. And what I did is I clicked on Get Shareable Link, and I changed it from View to Edit. And now it, I'm done. So this is now a shareable document. So all I have to do now is take this URL and put it somewhere, and anybody who clicks on the link can edit this document. So I'm going to put this link in the chat right now. And I want everybody here in chat to pretend you're on my team A and click on this link and come in here and I want you to put your names in after mine so that we will have the names of the participants. There we go. See, you're already starting to work collaboratively. And uh, this is really all we have to do to get started. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to share our research. So I don't... I, uh, I haven't done any research yet, but uh, you know uh, we can get started. Um, so Team A is supporting the notion that uh, digital literacy uh, or uh, work online media uh, promotes literacy. So getting all our people in here. Uh, and Jason wants to fix his name. Yeah, all right, that's great. So uh, we can just keep going and. Uh, when you give full editing permissions, anybody can overwrite anybody else's material. So you need to work a little bit collegially, you know, and make sure you're doing stuff. You know, if uh, someone wanted to change my name or put it somewhere else, uh, instead of just simply doing it, what you might want to do is ask a question or ask permission first. So that's a great thing that you can do with comments. With comments, you select any portion of uh, what you want to talk about. And you go over here and you click on the comments button. And the comment button lets you add a comment over here. And it says, uh, I'm going to say, maybe we should move your name to the end. You know, that's you know, uh, a personal thing. They, they don't want me taking too much credit. So instead of just simply doing it, they're going to ask. You know, it's just manners and, and, and the way that you communicate when not everybody's in the same place at the same time. And uh, so I'll make it a question mark and comment 
And someone else can click on that and add to the comment. So we can talk to each other and have a little bit of a chat room here. So somebody click on that and tell me whether you think you should move my, we should move my name to the end. Uh, nobody's clicking on it. Somebody just make any statement you want. I just want to show you how this works. I, I don't want to reply to myself. Okay. Move it all the way. So if we ask the, the you know, we talk to each other, we made a decision. I'm going to put my name at the end. And when we've dealt with something, then we can say resolve and the whole thing goes away. So it's like little post-it notes that you're putting on here. Now you can leave them up because you can continue to keep talking. You know, Liz Z says move it all the way. And, uh, you know, I say sure. So we can have a conversation that just keeps running on. And uh, we don't have to take these away. But if we want to, if we want to treat them like post-it notes, whenever something is done, you can click resolve. But uh, we're here. Let me uh, go briefly to... Google search and find a link. Let's see. Uh, does online media um, improve literacy? I'll just ask Google the question. And uh, can Twitter boost literacy? Article from the NPR. So this sounds pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to go through this right now, but I'm going to steal this link. I'm going to say this is an interesting link. I'm going to take this to the group. So in coming to the group, and where did I put my link? Here we are. Uh, I can start bringing research to the team. Now, the link is here. Anybody can use it. Anybody can pick it up. Anybody can click on it and check it. So we're going to start collecting research here. And uh, somebody else could click on this link and make a note and say, I checked this out. I don't think it's very good or, oh, I think it's great. We'll, be, we'll start with this, etc." So this is how you guys can work <clears throat> from miles apart from each other but have conversations going. And you don't even have to be there at the same time. Uh, people can come in later and add their thoughts. We've got four or five full days, so there's going to be plenty of time for you guys to get this going. Now, in the same way that I dropped this link in the chat box here, if I were really Team A, I could take this link to the chat rooms that we created for each members on uh, the website. So there is a Team A website, and I'm sure it's full of stuff people have already written. And so you guys are already getting together. You're already talking to each other. Um, you're working on Facebook. That's a fabulous way to work. Uh, I don't know if it gives you document power or whatnot. But if I wanted to be Tim, uh, if I were a member of Team A and nobody had done this before, I could just come in here and say, hey, guys, I made us a team document to work on. And all your, you, you know, you're not saying it's finished or anything. You're just providing the link and come down. Now, remember, in our chat room, when you put a link in, the link is not activated. So what you have to do is you have to come up here to the toolbar to this little thing that says link, and then it inserts a link, and you can put the link there. And I always like to click this little open in a new tab so that that makes that happen. And so if I hit post now, this will actually post to Team A. I don't really want Team A using this document, but that's how simple it is to create something, link it into the chat room, and uh, have a document that everybody goes to. Now, most people are going to start coming into Team A website and try to find each other. So this is a good place to start. Um, if you guys have already, if this team has already found each other, and you're working over in Facebook, then that's fine. You don't have to do much else. Now, if you have a way to create the document together, you don't have to do anything else. But if you find that working on an online document can help you, um, then you might want to take this link over to Facebook and provide it to everyone over there. So wherever you're working, however you want to work is fine. And again, you don't have to work in this fashion at all. 
you if you guys can pass enough information and your links and your ideas and everything in the Facebook group, then maybe you're going to have a coordinator who works offline in Microsoft Word and puts it all together. Uh, that's fine too. So you don't have to work in an online fashion, but this is really the most efficient way and it, it helps uh, sort of get rid of that friction of who's doing what. I mean, if, if people come in at any time of the day or night, uh, you know, they find the link, they know that they can be at the right party, so to speak. So uh, when you're turning this in, you can treat this as a as work process. So you may want to make a second document that is the clean turn-in document. Or you may want to have a process in which you clean up this document. Um, either way is fine. Again, uh, don't be afraid of using the, the comments feature or the chat feature or all of this stuff. The tools are there to help you talk to each other. And as long as you kind of feel like you're, you're getting your ideas through to each other, then you're working together in a team. And then you know, there's a phase at the end where you'll want to you know, make the document that you're handing to Team C. If Team C doesn't need to see all this stuff, then, you know, you may want to clean it up. But it's up to you. And um, my only job in this process, you send me the document and I get it posted for Team C. Uh, but certainly, if you're going to work on a, a document that you've linked into Team A chat room, all I'm going to be doing with Team C is giving them that same link so that they can go to the same place. So, um, the more that I'm not uh, um, uh, a stumbling block in this process, the, the smoother everything goes. So uh, those are the things that I wanted to show you. There's more about using Google Docs, but uh, I don't really want to get into uh, you know talking about the toolbar and all these other functions. I just want you to start playing around with the collaboration functions for now. Uh, and in terms of research, uh, I think it's a great idea for you guys to have a phase where everybody goes out and brings something back. And then, you know, if two people brought back the same link, that's fine. If one person brings back four links and somebody only brings back two, it, that doesn't matter. Uh, in terms of research, in terms of what you're doing with your statement, I found that a good length is about two full paragraphs, about a half to three quarters of a page. You can go longer if you want. You can do this in a presentation type format if you want to turn it into a slideshow or something. But really, uh, this is the best format, a page, a page uh, and a half of good solid text, formatted well. Uh, there are different ways to indicate that something's based on research. You can start a sentence that, uh, you know, referring to where it came from. As the New York Times says, blah, 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 blah. You can do this kind of thing where you just simply uh, put a, a parenthetical statement at the end. You know, that lets people know where that research came from. People uh, um, can write in hypertext so that you can put links in the middle of a statement. Um, you don't have a responsibility for putting in footnotes or uh, those kinds of uh, citations, but you have a responsibility to know that what you're saying is backed up by the research that you're providing. So uh, don't forget to provide the link uh, that you know some, some statement came from. And, uh, you know, it's, it's okay to provide more research than you actually used. So if you collect 16 links and you only use data, you can put all 16 down there. <clears throat> but, you know, please make sure that you're providing the research that you are using for sure. And, uh, again, you've got this early phase where it's a good idea to collect too much stuff. And then you want to narrow it down because you, you don't want to deal with too much material. And, uh, you know, really... Uh, less than less than four links is too few. More than twenty links is too many. You know, six to eight are uh, is probably the sweet spot in terms of actual citable research that's going to go into your document. Because you don't want to make this too too wieldy. I'm not looking for you to do an entire term paper. I'm looking for you to give us a solid argument based on you know several different sources that you have collated together. So another part of your task is just figuring out how to use other people's words to say what you want to say. And I don't want to see a lot of personal opinion. If, if, if something's in here and because it's your opinion and you haven't supported it, you know, that's a poor job of debating. 
So uh, I'm going to turn all the mics on again, and uh, anybody who wants uh, to ask a question. Wants, ask a question. Um, anybody um, that needs to mute themselves? themselves? You said six to eight, eight. Um, um, sources. Sources. I think that's a sweet spot. I think that's a sweet spot. Um, I think. Um, I think search. The the assignment may have had. If it's a minimum, it's probably the minimum. But I think you need more than that to be able to make your statements. So six to eight is a good, good notion. And that pretty much rounds out to each person one on the team brings one link. Okay. Uh, we're getting a lot of noise here. I'm going to turn the uh, mics back off. Anybody who wants to ask a question can ask it in the in the chat box. I think that's probably just a, a simple. Um, Oh, uh, I think Jessica was just talking about when we were playing around in the dock. Yeah, I mean, it just takes a little time working with this stuff to figure out what the features are and, and, and what the best way to use things are and so forth. But it becomes really simple, uh, you know. And in terms of uh, writing things together, you know, uh, it's, it's cumbersome to be talking everyone through a sentence. So you will find different ways to parcel this out. You might have everyone who brings a link that you want to use, write the statement for it, and then you put them all together. Um, you might have one person do a first draft of writing everything, and then someone else does a, uh, an edit of that, and then someone else does an edit of that. You don't want everyone to write their own stuff and everyone to dump it in to the document and no one else read what anybody else wrote. That's not a team statement. But other than that, the way that you figure out how to make the team statement is up to you. Uh, I like the notion that everybody writes some stuff and everybody reads and edits everybody else's work. Uh, that way you all feel a true ownership in what your team has said and you all know what your team has said. So uh, uh, is there a limit to how much we're allowed to put into our statement? Uh, no. Um, you are giving it to Team C. So Team C has to go through what you wrote. Uh, if you do an amazing job and it's 20 pages long, I'll be impressed, but Team C will hate you. <laughs> but, you know, uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, you should do the job that you feel uh, is required. And again, we don't want to make this into some giant thing. Uh, with six or eight people working together, you should be able to make a statement that is three quarters of a page to a page and a half uh, with no problem at all. And if you feel like you need to go longer, you have plenty of uh, leeway to do so. So if you want to make something that's five or six or eight pages long, that's fine. It just requires more writing, more editing, and lots more research. So um, I'm going to leave that length open-ended. Uh, just make sure that everyone on the team is comfortable with, with how much you're doing. Uh, are there any other questions? Well, uh, I'm going to be available all week. I'm sorry that I was slightly out of touch last week. It was just uh, because of, of uh, they had us on a special project. But um, I'm going to be available to answer any and all questions. I'm going to have a recording of this up uh, later this afternoon. And I'm hosting one of the, uh, the library globals tonight at 7. So uh, if you haven't been to a library session yet, uh, check one of those out today or tomorrow, uh, and you'll get a good understanding of what the library resources are. And I'll be back, I believe, on Wednesday to talk about the uh, main project of the week. It's called Research Incredible Connections. Uh, and anybody has a question about this, uh, just shoot me a quick message or an email, and I'll get right back to you. Thanks, guys. Oh, um, for labs, I just rely on you clicking on the I have done this activity button for attendance. For globals, you have to click on the attendance link. So the attendance link that you fill out that form with is for the globals. 
And for the labs, uh, uh, whether you're watching the video or you're attending live, I'm just simply um, uh, counting on you clicking the I have done this in the point one uh, assignment page for attendance. So if you forget to do that, you can send me an email after the fact and I will mark your attendance. Any more questions? All right, well, thanks guys.